one of the things that this is actually coming from your papers. So concordant originality is to be compliance oriented and provide a blockchain which meets business needs. And uh, it offers an environment where confidential data about a suspected transaction can be disclosed when requested is substantiated by a court order by from a relevant regulator. And the CCD token, the Concordi token, native token serves to pay transaction fees, which are low, predictive, and fiat stable. So uh, can you tell us a bit some case studies for people that know less about Concordium, uh, one or two case studies that you think can highlight some of the things that I just mentioned from your paper? Yeah, I think uh, if, if you have a high volume of transactions, obviously you uh, not only do you need low fees, but you also need to know that they're not high in 12 months' time, right? If you look at Ethereum, uh, three years ago, there were use cases being built that worked fine under the then conditions, but are now uh, crossed by, you know, 30, 50, 500 dollar uh, transaction fees, right? Which in itself is an absurdity if you want to be a piece of infrastructure. Hence the need, again, to move to layer two solutions where you, you don't have that problem. So the way that we achieve those uh, fixed fees is obviously we don't have a process that, uh, that uh, we're not based on proof of work, right? So we're, we're not based on having to to generate uh, this this uh, this highly complex and highly energy consuming uh, consuming uh, way of, of of reaching consensus. So on on our platform, we can kind of set we can set our own uh, our own transactions fees, and we'll ultimately distribute that out to a, a broader governance. But we have also built a, a function in there called Energy, which. Uh, which automatically converts. If you want, you and I want to make a smart contract. We we want to fix the fee for for something at ten euro cents or whatever. We can fix that in a smart contract, irrespective of of C, uh, CCD's uh, uh, price at the time, because there's an automated conversion vis-a-vis -vis an oracle that provides this this price for the fiat currency. So in principle, you can fix your your fees in. Uh, in fiat currencies as well, and I think that's a, that's a key thing for for wider corporate adoption. You know, if you don't know what fees are going to be like in twelve or twenty four months, I mean, some of these projects are complex; you might not even have launched till twelve or twenty four months, and then you need to know that your business model is not going to get broken straight away by you adding a lot of transactions to the platform, right? So uh, that I find very very uh, important. Then there's the other aspect of a high level of security. I give you a good example of a use case that we are working at at the moment. We uh, we have partnered up with a company in Holland that's the biggest uh, private sector printer of of stamps and and banknotes. Right, mostly stamps these days because most of the governments have insourced the, the banknote printing, but they actually used to until about five years ago. They're printing most of Holland's uh, euro notes, you know, but uh, but today, very much on stamps, right? Now, what is uh, what is important for stamps and obviously in particular banknotes is that they are very hard to replicate, right? That you you cannot just stand down on your uh, on your Xerox and uh, and make your own banknotes or even your own stamps for that matter, right? So, so they have some very sophisticated printing equipment that uh, that secures the the, the the secures these, these items against fraud, right? Now they actually stamps is a is an industry you would have thought was dying because it's not very often that we that we use that anymore. But uh, to some extent, the traditional use of stamps is dying. But it's still the world's largest collector new community, believe it or not. It's still, in spite of crypto punks and and, and whatever have you, uh, gaming yes. games out there, the biggest collecting community in the world is the stamp community, right? Uh, and, and, and they obviously want to sh to continue this into a new generation, right? Because some of these guys are, are perhaps uh, of, 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 a, of, of another generation, although there's some interest in, in, in younger generations for that as well in recent years. But for them to move uh, some of that interest onto collecting NFT-based stamps is, 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 is uh, one way. And, and we will actually launch the first nation state quite soon with uh, with uh, NFT stamps from from an official national post office, 
Uh, and a lot of that production is actually today going towards collectors. Uh, maybe 10% of all stamps today are meant for collectors rather than for letters, right? So in such a scenario where you need to have the same degree of certainty uh, against fraudulent activity, uh, the choice of blockchain is is important, right? You 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 take a lot of care that it's hard to reproduce the the physical item. You want to have the same degree of certainty that it's not being uh, abused in the in the virtual space. So there, the combination of our ID layer, our ultra secure infrastructure, etc lends itself very well. So, so that's one use case I could give you an example of, right? But the whole idea that you want to also prove who is the, who is the issue of, of an NFT, who, who does it actually come from, you know? Perhaps also who is it going to? If you want that information, you can ask the person for it. And if he wants to give it to you, he can do it. Still a private ID. Uh, but if he doesn't want to do it, you... Just don't sell to him if it's a precondition for you to know that, right? So uh, in areas like that where we're linking closely together the issue, of, and I would say that goes for actually for most NFTs, there's a lot of fraud and in general IPR, intellectual property rights, where you know, you're selling a design, you're selling, you're selling an artwork, you're selling a, a, a valuable digital file, you want to have that strong link between who you're actually buying it from, which also makes it easier to spot uh, people that have basically ripped you off, right? Uh, so I think uh, those are very good use cases uh, for that. And then I would say, you know, this industry tends to jump on every buzzword it can find, right? And the latest one is probably metaverse, right? Oh, metaverse, blockchain, same thing. Well, it's not the same thing at all, right? Actually, I don't see any intrinsic need for blockchain for metaverse we've had metaverses for many many years uh second life was a metaverse you know there was no blockchain the sims in 1989 was a, was a metaverse no need for blockchain right uh, uh, so what you need a blockchain for in there is if you have you can also argue with most games are uh, a type of metaverse you know and again no blockchain right so there's no direct link between link uh, between blockchain and metaverse but where there is an interesting link is if if you have a well-functioning metaverse and you have an in-game or an in-metaverse economy and you want to secure some assets that are floating around in there being bought and sold if you want to know who you interact with in a metaverse an id layer could, could come in very handy right so you can actually id yourself to somebody else in the metaverse so that's where I think it plays a role if, if you have that particular need, right? And you might not always have it. You know, if you go into a metaverse and you're dancing around the dance floor and watching a, a, very, a digital concert or something like that, you may not need to know who you're dancing with, right? Just like you go down the pub, you don't start asking everybody for their passport before you order a beer, right? Uh, but then if it goes beyond that and you want to do a piece of business or you want to exchange a value or something like that, or you want to be absolutely sure who the other person is, then uh, an infrastructure like Concordium could come in very handy. And that's where I see more the role of blockchain. If you have in-game or in-metaverse economies that you need to have safe and secure, that's the role of blockchain more so than anything else, right? And, uh, and uh, we see some requests around that as well, because, you know, everybody wants to build a metaverse right now. And, uh, I think we are going to see a lot of failed attempts in that space, but uh, but I think the ones that succeed will actually, at least for part of their activities, have a need also for a safe economy inside those metaverses. Yeah, and I think there's a uh, completely subscribe, and I love your metaphor from uh, from uh, and, uh, if you go to a party, they really don't need to ask the passport, especially if you want to dance to someone. It's a great one. Huh? 